guys, it's Caitlin. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today we are testing out and reviewing the Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa Is Dead collab. Today we're gonna have three looks, swatches, some kind of first impressions and review type pros and cons for the palette. This is one of the three looks. So if you're interested in learning more about the collection, the price points, the quality, seeing some looks, keep on watching. Before we get too far into the video, if you have not already, I hope you will consider subscribing. I upload videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. Wednesday is more lifestyle content and Sunday is more beauty type content. So join on in and have some great conversations with us down in the comments. All right, so we're gonna get into swatches of the collection and talk about the price point of everything and then we will get into the three looks. All right, everyone, so here is the palette all swatched out, all nine shades. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the order of the names and I'm gonna go from this side all the way to this side in my descriptions. First shade here is straight to VHS. It is a metallic, it is a yellow color. And the second one is the final girl. It is kind of reddish. I think it comes off more pink on the eye, but that is a matte. Spellbound is a light purple metallic. Watery Grave is a matte. It is kind of a periwinkle blue. Body Snatched is a yellowy green kind of chartreuse color. Matches the uh, liner that is green. I think that one is ectoplasm. Next is Ancient Evil, which is another metallic, and it is kind of a rose gold, little bit of peachy almost of a shade. Predator is a deeper blue. Creature Feature is a teal, both of those are mattes, and then the final matte and color in the palette is Vengeful Spirit, which is a deeper burgundy shade. So again, here's the whole palette swatched out. So the shadow all in all contains six mattes and three metallics and is $37. It's currently sold out, but you can order it on pre-order. I believe their site states that those pre-order ones won't ship out until August 30th at the very earliest. They also have three liners. I'm not gonna swatch them just because they do not come off people of the skin. On my eye, that's not what I experienced, but on the back of my hand, they definitely, definitely did not come off. If you're wondering about the liners, I do use them in my looks though. There's Ectoplasm, Spectre, and Entity, and you can get those as a bundle for $41.85. Those are also only pre-order right now. You can also get the liners individually if you don't want the set, and they are $15.50 individually, also on pre-order. Now that swatches are done, we are going to go ahead and get into the three looks. Okay, so I have the whole face done except for the eyes and we are getting into look one today. Um, so I'm gonna start on an M441 and I'm gonna go in with Watery Grave here, kind of like a periwinkle looking matte. And I'm just gonna lightly place that in my crease on both eyes. I did prime my eyelids, I always do when I do eyeshadow. I will leave in the description, as always, a list of all the other products that are on my face that I don't mention in the video for anyone that's interested. I like the fact that this is a shadow that goes on kind of sheer, but you can build up. I especially like that kind of shade for a transition shade where you can start light and sheer you can build up the opacity some. Maybe I should say this isn't my first experience with Lethal Cosmetics. I have done a custom palette before with them. I mean, if you guys would be interested in seeing the custom palette that I built or like some of the other shades and things that they offer as a brand. Next, I'm gonna go with M456 into Creature Feature. And I'm gonna do that just a bit on the outer third here. Ooh, that's a bit more teal than I expected. I don't know what I expected. It looks a little more cool tone to me in the pan. It's nice, it's just not what I expected. Also blending that a little bit into the crease just to connect it to the first shade that we did. Okay, next I'm gonna go on an E36, just a tiny little brush here, and I'm gonna take just a little bit here of Vengeful Spirit to add a little bit more 
darkness to the outside here. I'm not gonna go all the way out. I'm just gonna kind of go over the teal a little bit here. I still want the teal to be on the outside, but I want a little more depth. Kind of like when I'm mixing these two, it, it's a little more like burgundy in here, but it's making it turn a bit more purple because I layered it over the teal, which I like that when colors kind of, you can blend them together or on top of each other and they don't become patchy and you can actually create some new colors by doing that. It's really nice. I'm taking a little bit of Ulta Glitter Primer on an M124. I'm gonna put some shimmers here. The shimmers are fine on their own, but like most shimmers, if you put down a glitter primer or spray them, things like that, it just helps give them a little extra pop. So I want the extra pop with these shimmers today, so I'm only laying this glitter primer where I haven't put any shadows yet. And I'm gonna do two today. I'm gonna start with Spellbound, and then I'm gonna go inwards towards my inner corner with Ancient Evil. So taking the same exact brush that still has some of that primer, glitter primer I just put on it, and putting down Spellbound. It's like a slightly more purple version of Watery Grave. It's still cool toned, kind of feels like it's in the Periwinkle family. But you can see from the crease shade to the shimmer that they are definitely different colors. Placing it kind of diagonally here just so that I have some room left for that other shimmer. It's applying really nicely. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have absolutely no fallout whatsoever, which is wonderful. I'm gonna take the same brush other side to go into Ancient Evil. We're just gonna put that on the innermost part of the eye here, right next to Spellbound, and fill in whatever space we have left. And then just to finish, I'm gonna go back with my first brush and a little bit of watery gray, just to make sure that's not lost here in the crease at the very top, because I do want that to be seen in come through a little bit here on top of these shimmers. Then I'm gonna take the small E36. I'm not putting any additional product on there, but this is what I had Vengeful Spirit on, that kind of like deeper burgundy. And I'm just gonna run that on the outer third here of the lower lash line. With no extra product, I'm gonna take the Watery Grave brush and put any that's left on the inner half of the underneath of the eye. Just cause it's like the only inner shade color, like maybe you could use Ancient Evil as an inner corner. I don't know, maybe, maybe. I feel like I'm a little too fair to do that. I think it would be a little too dark on my skin, but I'm gonna take straight to VHS on an M560, pop that in the inner corner here. All right, and here is the shadow for look one. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, some liner. I did get the liners from this collection as well. So I'm gonna do the liner um, and some lashes, like the mascara off camera, and I'll be back to show you the final look. All right, guys, and here is the completed look one with the collection. What do we think? Um, I went in with, let me see if I can remember this right, Entity or Spectre? The gray one on top and the blue one in the waterline. Um, you can probably tell this eye especially. I don't know, I don't know. Um, I know Teresa says these are great for the waterline. I did not have a good experience with these in the waterline today. Um, I think my mistake was like these are very wet, they're a gel. So, you know, I put it in my waterline and let go and the gel basically got all up in my contact, like it wasn't dry. So I think I need to like apply it, hold it, which I'm really like stretching my skin, so I, uh, I'm i just not sold on it yet. So I'm going to try it again and like adjust, see if it's a me thing, like a user thing for next time, but I might not like these in the lower lash waterline. On top I used the gray one though for a little wing. That was okay, that one I could get down with. Again, a little bit of a user, learning curve, if you will. It's very, um, like a little bit goes a long way. And I don't know, it's just much more gel. That's the best way I can describe it. It's much more gel, like I expect it to be like a gel liner, but it's even more gel than a gel liner. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like very creamy. It's almost like, it feels like the consistency of a concealer, it's so creamy. So 
yeah that's look one and sorry i'm blinking a lot and looking around but this eye is really not feeling good right now because of me trying to put that in my waterline. <laughs> so stay tuned for the next two looks and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. Hello everyone, here we are for look number two. Um, so today I'm going to watch Wesley race at the drag strip. So I was thinking originally of doing like a glam look, but it's just gonna be super sweaty. I played with six shades, I realized in the first look. Um, we did watery grave, creature feature, vengeful spirit, Ancient Evil, Spellbound, and even a little bit of straight to VHS. So we've used a lot of the colors already. So that leaves us with Predator I haven't used, Body Snatch, and The Final Girl. So I think today I'm gonna go for more of like a green blue so we can incorporate these two shades that I haven't used yet. And then we'll play with that one tomorrow. These aren't the only shades I'm gonna use today, but I just wanna get, I like when I do these three looks one palette videos to use as many of the shadows as possible because as I'm creating these looks, it's kind of helping me formulate my opinions, thoughts on the palette itself. Um, that way, after I've done three looks, I can give you guys a little bit more of an idea of my thoughts and review it a bit better. So just like yesterday, I'm starting with an M441. I like to use this a lot of the times um, for my transition shape. Like I almost always start with this brush when I do looks and I am starting with the shade Body Snatch which is this nice green. I hear people use the word the color chartreuse a lot. I don't really know what the difference is between like a chartreuse versus like is it just a pukey yellowy green? Is that what that color is? I don't really know but this is nice. It's kind of lime looking I think. I'm wearing a yellow top, so we'll see if that's a good decision or not with this, but I thought this looked like it would be good for the transition here. Then I'm going to go to an M456 and take Predator. I'm going to use that just on the outer third of the eye. These shadows are pretty powdery. Um, if you have not noticed, I generally like to do my complexion makeup first. Um, so you do have to be aware of fallout. I did note, you know, there wasn't much on my face in the first look, but I think that's a lot to do with the fact that I am tapping every single time to get the excess off the brush so that I don't have any more than what I absolutely need on the brush. So a lot of times I like to place this diagonally to start to create that elongated look. And then I usually at the top kind of connect that outer shade color with whatever I put in my crease to make sure there's a nice blend going there. That looks really nice. So just like I mentioned in the first look, you might be able to see here, there's the blue shade, there's the green, and then there's this nice third color that has formed where I've blended them together. I really love it when mattes layer and play nicely together like that. Next I'm going to take Watery Grave, the lighter blue on an E36. And I'm just gonna fill in the front part of my eye here with that shade. Everything that is left, fill in with that blue. I'm really surprised with it being such a light blue, like borderline pastel, how opaque the shade is. It's not translucent at all on the lid, which I really like. I'm gonna take a little bit of that same shade, put it on the inner, portion of the under eye and I'm gonna go back to the predator brush I'm not really putting any extra product on I'm just using whatever's left and running it here on the outside and then I use straight to VHS as a as an inner corner color but I want to see how it performs as like a topper shade so I'm just taking it on my finger here and I'm just gonna place it over top of uh, watery grave to like I still want water gray to peek through I just want a little sparkle so that's how it looks can you guys really tell a difference or not without just all matte and then with straight to VHS tapped on the lid over top it adds something but it's very minimal in my opinion I'll go ahead and do it to the other side just so we match right and I'm gonna try it might be a little deep for my skin tone we're about to find out on an M 560 going in with Ancient Evil, which is kind of like the peachy champagne shimmer. 
just pop a little bit of that on the inner corner. Yeah, it's not terrible as an inner corner shade, but I do think it's a bit too peach leaning for my particular skin tone to use as an inner corner highlight, but this is how we find out. We try and we know for next time. Okay, so I am going to go use uh, the gel liner from Collection and do a wing on top. I'm not going to mess with putting it in my waterline today. I had a terrible experience in the first look as you guys started to hear me talk about it, but even by the end of the night, like it wasn't even in my waterline on one eye at all. It did not last whatsoever. My eye was uncomfortable and watering the whole time. It just was not a good time. So. I may try that again in the future, but I really don't want to and look two or three just because I'm going to the track today and I'm going out to dinner tomorrow and I want to be able to enjoy my time and not be worried about is the makeup going to be uncomfortable. So I will still use them as top liners, but I'm not going to be putting that in my waterline again. Let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks on how I can make that work in the waterline. If you have tried the Lethal Cosmetics gel liners in the waterline specifically, I would love to hear suggestions because Teresa says they're amazing and I feel like she wouldn't just say that so I feel like it's got to be user error but I don't know what I'm doing wrong so like I said I'll be right back with the finished look all right guys so here is the second look completed what do we think I went in with ectoplasm to make a wing on the top I used a different brush today I used that pointed one that BH one I showed you guys in a recent haul that worked much better than the like angled liner brush that I was trying to use before like having the tip versus the angle just made it a lot easier and I like the fact that I, since I'm not wearing false lashes having such a bright color near my lash line and then doing black lashes on top of that I feel like it really makes my natural lashes pop a lot more with that bright green and I really think sometimes when I'm not trying out the eyeshadow palette and having those colors that those gel liners would be really nice for a graphic liner look that's something I've really been wanting to attempt to do but again it's one of those things where I've never tried it and since I'm going somewhere today and tomorrow I don't want to try it now and have it look bad because I don't have the time to like wipe it all off and fix it and do the whole ordeal so someday graphic liner will happen other than the mascara and the ectoplasm liner, I did want something in my waterline just to brighten my eyes a little bit. And since I was scared off yesterday by the gel liners, I did go ahead and put in the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in shade Extra Frosting. This is from the Limoncello Collection. That formula I know I have absolutely no issues with. In my waterline, it stays very well. The pencil is easy to work with. It doesn't get in my eyes. It's not uncomfortable. This ColourPop formula and the LA Girl liner formula are the only two I have found so far that last and work well in my waterline. So I don't know about you guys, but those are my personal recommendations for waterline eyeliners. All right, guys, and with that, I will leave you and we'll go on to the final look. Hey guys, so I totally thought I was recording, sorry here, but we are here for look three. The only shade I haven't used so far is the final girl. So I went ahead with an M441 on my front eyelid and all I did so far was put that into the crease and then I realized I was not filming. So sorry about that. I'm trying to do something a little more soft today. Um, I am now going in with an M456 with Vengeful Spirit just on the outer third. And I learned from yesterday's look where I tapped straight to VHS just all over the lid as kind of like a topper that you will need to use a glitter primer with that because I would say from about here up, like the eye down to here on both sides was glitter everywhere from that straight to VHS shade. Some of it did stay on my lid. There still was some on my lid, but if you don't want that on your face, you will need a glitter primer to use that. If you're fine with that, great, but just something that I wanted to note because it wasn't just like a little, it was intense. It was immense and intense, okay? And it was even, like I usually don't mind, but it was even a little too immense and intense for me. I was like, oh, that that is noteworthy. That is a lot. So today we're going in with the glitter primer because I am trying to do something a little more soft today. And I'm taking that brush and just putting whatever is left of Vengeful Spirit underneath. 
Next, I'm taking some glitter primer on an M124, and I'm just gonna put that on the rest of the lid. I think I might just do a three shade and done look today, guys. I mean, the other days I used um, like four to six shades per look. So I think it might be nice to show you something a little more simplistic. This is only a nine pan palette after all, so there's certainly a lot of combinations and looks you can do with this, but even then, it's only nine pans, so you know, there are limits to that. I feel like any of these, whether it's simple or um, more intricate, could be taken to the next level with lashes. I just wasn't feeling lashes the past three days. Sometimes I'm in the mood and sometimes I'm not, and I just was not this time. I'm taking the same brush that still has that sticky base on it and going into Ancient Evil, which is kind of the peachy champagne, and I'm just gonna put that all over the lid on the inner, probably close to half. And I like to go a little bit above my crease just because I do have somewhat hooded eyes. And that way when I open my eye, you can still see up here the color. Okay, I'm just gonna go back in with the final girl a little bit more. Kinda like in my first look when I uh, did some of the shimmers and just make sure we didn't lose any of that shade up here in the crease above. And then I'm also going back in with the M456 to make sure Vengeful Spirit is blended on the corner into that shade well, that shimmer shade, so it's not just like an abrupt change from mattes to shimmers. All right, and I'm not gonna do any of the shades from the palette on the inner corner. I'll probably just use like the highlighter I'm wearing as my inner corner with this particular look. So I'm gonna do mascara and that inner corner bit, and I will be back to share with you my final thoughts on the Lethal Is Dead collection. All right guys, and this is the final look for the third look. I added the NYX On The Rise of Mascara, and I did add a bit of the shade Woodsy from the ColourPop X Rob Beauty Christie collab as liner on the upper lash line. I didn't use any of the liners from the collection. I wanted something brown for this look to match my warm lip and the romper that I'm wearing right now. And brown just wasn't a color in the collection. So it was what it was today with this look. So now that we've done all three looks, let's talk about thoughts on the collection. So first and foremost, this collection is for anyone that wants to support Teresa. Whether I had known anything about Lethal is Dead previously or not, I probably would have purchased this just because we stand Teresa on this channel. When it comes to the actual quality of the palette, I do like that a lot of these shades are sheer to buildable. So you could have a light wash of color or you could build them up. That being said, I don't feel like there is anything that is so, so deep in the mattes as what I would really like. Obviously you can add things, you're not stuck to just the palette. So if I weren't just using this palette like I did in the video, I might bring in a matte black or a gray from another palette just to really be able to make even smokier looks with this. The shimmers can pack a punch when you use a glitter primer, but just tapping them on as a topper or using them alone is going to give you a lot of shimmer fallout. Not glitter, there are no pressed glitters, but shimmer fallout all over the face. The color selection is not something I honestly would have picked on my own. Um, it was kind of weird, like in the first look, putting so many different colors together. I don't know if they went per se, but I feel like if you use just a few colors like I did in this look, I only used three of the shades, you can come up with something more wearable. I say wearable because obviously this is all just my opinion and my taste in makeup. Totally different for many other people. I understand that. The aesthetic, the don't look behind you in the mirror, the names, the name Lethal is Dead play on Teresa's Dead's channel. The theming of the collection is wonderful. So I would get this again if it were a Teresa collab, just because like I said, I wanted to support Teresa. If this had just come out from Lethal Cosmetics, no Teresa attached to it, I don't know that I would have purchased this just because I'm not sure that I vibe with the color story that much. But I am happy to have it just to support Teresa. And I can say if you do vibe with the color story, that it is good quality. Now when it comes to the liners in the collection, I did not have great success whatsoever. I think a lot of it is just a learning curve though. So I'm not going to write up the liners. Um, I haven't used them a bunch. So take this review as just first impressions for the liners. 
they were not comfortable in my waterline whatsoever and it took a long time for them to dry down for me to even be able to like release the lower part of my face there like I would have to hold it and let it dry and then release it otherwise the liner was just adhering to my eyeball and not staying in my waterline even once I did get it to dry and stay there being a contact wearer, it was not comfortable with my contacts. I could feel like it was it was in my eye and in my contacts, which I don't get when I use some of the pencil gel liners like the ones from ColourPop or LA Girl. Those are my favorites. On the top lash line, they were much more comfortable. I think it takes a lot more of a steady hand um, and I couldn't like smudge them out as much as I could other gel liners. But again, I think that may just be user error and I may just need to get used to that particular formula. I will say though that as someone who is now 30, I felt like the liner did emphasize the texture of my lids a little bit more. So I, uh, I don't know about that. It just looked a little like wrinkly on my lids. It didn't crack at all. It was very opaque, but the texture was there. So I need to start playing with those a little bit more to get my final thoughts. I'm not a huge fan up front, but that totally could change if I can figure out what I need to do to make them work for me. Being that those are individually the price that they are, I don't think I would get any more just because I'm not feeling the formula for me, which is a shame because they have great colors, such fun colors. So if I can make the formula f work for me, or if you're someone that you love the formula already, those are gonna last you a long time. I know the price point is like high for a liner, but it's gonna last you forever and ever and ever with that pot because I use just the smallest, barely touched my bristle into the gel pot liner and there was such opacity right away. So that was definitely a pro of those gel liners. All in all, if I had to pick between the palette and the liners, I would definitely pick the palette, but you know, I'm an eyeshadow palette girl. But again, I'm happy to have them in my collection because again, I wanted to support Teresa. So should you buy the collection? That's totally up to you. These are just some of my thoughts with my personal experience with the collection. Obviously you can do whatever you want, but keep these pros and cons in mind. And with that guys, I'm gonna close out the video. Let me know which was your favorite of the three looks. I think this last one is my favorite, just because like I said, it's more minimal and things seem to like go together and be cohesive as a look as opposed to some of my other looks but that's just my opinion what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below did you pick up this collection or will you be picking it up and i hope to see you guys on my next video bye